Yeah. So, so what do you think about now? Um, America is now up in the ante in the South China Sea, in the Taiwan Strait, <laughs> and, and, and the so, media is saying this. And here's the thing: I got I got to preface that with this um, call. China aggressive stance. China is being belligerent in the Pacific. So I have to I have to say that before you say anything. So keep that in mind while you're addressing it. Well, of course, it's China's aggressive stance because what else would compel United States to cross the entire Pacific to South China Sea and more specifically to the Kinmen Islands, which is literally a couple kilometers off the Chinese coast where mm -hmm. U.S. stick its special forces the Green Berets. It's kind of mind-boggling. The CNN actually did a segment on it, and they actually put a map of Kinmen Island. I mean, I think that's their mistake. If they don't put a map, you know, people in America they will have no idea where Kinmen <laughs> Island is. But if you put a, if you put Kinmen Island on a map, you can literally see how close it is to the Chinese coast yeah. and how ridiculous it is to stick the U.S. Special Forces there. China's Coast Guard showing force around a group of islands controlled by Taiwan within spitting distance of the mainland. You can see how close we are to the skyline of the Chinese city of Xiamen. There are Chinese construction boats all throughout these waters. And so why why U.S. is doing this? Well, when you are failing in a two-front war in Ukraine and in the Middle East, you know, the only thing to do, the logical thing to do, of course, is open a three-front war <laughs> because that will guarantee a victory. I mean, I, I think they're not serious about uh, actually starting a confrontation right now with China. What they're doing is distraction. They're distraction from being particularly is Israeli atrocities in Gaza and the U.S. impotence in stopping the, the Ansar Allah blockade of Ye, uh, in Red Sea. Because, you know, like a few months ago, we have all these, uh, all these uh, NATO fans posting on Twitter saying, oh, we're going to show them why Americans, why we don't have free health care. They, they, they post the, the videos of U.S. aircraft carrier groups sailing into the Red Sea. Well, now it's, it's March. <laughs>
operation what what what, what they call it the prosperity guardian going <laughs> on in the red sea I and mean, you think you can blockade Strait of Malacca when you can't even break through the siege of Red Sea? I mean, come on, you are you are facing off against Yemen, you know, and, and you can't win. And you think you can win against China? I mean, the the, the delusion is just mind boggling. Do you think that the people in Washington D.C. and London and Brussels and Berlin and in Paris are starting to panic because, again? We see everywhere that they used to exercise unrivaled influence and power. Um, they're being challenged at every point. And every time you look to Africa, they, they Russia is there um, uh, illegally. Not not America now, but Russia. Um, uh, China is there exploiting. Now, we're, we're talking about colonizers talking about China exploiting Africa. Then they're in the Middle East doing the same thing. They're even in europe doing the same thing trying to block out russia and china do you think that these people are panicked in such a manner that they're just throwing anything up against the wall to see if they can stop the the hemorrhaging of the the u.s empire did, did you hear that uh statement by joseph uh Borrell, the the foreign minister of eu and he just this came out like last week and he basically admitted like the end of the Western hegemony yes. is here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and, yes. Yeah, and, and he said, you know, we have to be very careful to avoid a West versus a rest mentality because that's going to lead to our defeat. But then few paragraphs down the road, his solution is we got to double down in Ukraine. We got to <laughs> double down in our support in Ukraine. It's like, oh, my God, you, you just like you, you knew what the problem is. But you can't you can't just steer away from the the, the the same approach that leads you to the problem in the first place, right? And mm. then it talks about it needs to shore up support for Ukraine. It needs to confront China. It's like, dude, you are just doing the same thing that's got you in trouble in the first place. It's the the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's like a, when. When Biden was asked if the bombing campaign in Yemen was doing any good, and he's like, no, uh, but we're going to keep on doing it. Working. Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. It's, it's, this is absolutely insane. It, and, and the reason I, I ask you those things is because what you were just saying, it seems... If something is not working and you've tried it over and over and over again, it's time to reevaluate that policy so that you can find a way to make your policy work. But instead, they double, triple and quadruple down on failed policies. And, and to me, that is a sign of either stupidity or or being inebriated on imperial hubris. I, I One of the two. I, I, it, it can be both, Russia. It, it, it can be both. Uh, I mean, I, at this point, I think they, you're right, they're panicking. They really don't know what to do. They, so, so they got to stick to the same thing they've been doing all this, all this time before. The, the, the problem is, uh, it's, um, it's also vested interest, right? I mean, the whole NATO bureaucracy is invested to make, to keep Russia enemy. You know, if Russia becomes our friends, you know, why do we need all these NATO bureaucrats for? <laughs> they're, they're literally protecting their own job. They're protecting their own behind. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is why they got to keep, keep, you know, keep pouring billions of dollars into Ukraine. But the problem is, as we talked about earlier, uh, the, the billions of dollars, you know, one billion here, two billion here, I've, at the end of the day, it's just paper. You you can't. What 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 are you? What what is a billions of dollar getting you? Because Europe and the United States have so deindustrialized. You know they can print money up to the wazoo all they want. <laughs> it doesn't mean they can produce artillery shells for the Ukraine. Right. And in a land in a land war, artillery is still the king. Mm -hmm. And and Russia, as you mentioned before, Russia is outproducing the entire NATO countries combined. 
uh, and Russia and North Korea, by the way, <laughs> the problem is obvious. The, the Western economy are so financialized that they're not they're not making real things anymore. That's all offshore, off source to East Asia, right? <laughs> Which now they they want to wage war against China, the world's factory. When a lot of the source components for the a lot of the source components, rare earth materials, out out ultimately would have to be sourced from China. Think about that yep. for a second. And, and and they they think oh okay we we in order to preserve our hegemony we gotta we gotta slap down all uh, potential competitors including China who we have uh, who is making everything yep. and it just does not work and you know I think enough people have realized that this is a dead end but they can't deviate from the course because their their jobs their reputation, everything is staking on it. You know, they, they can't, they, it's like uh, they're on the Titanic, <laughs> but, but they see the big iceberg yes. ahead, yes. but they're like, no, we, we got to stay the course. <laughs> we got to stay the course. <laughs> it, it is absolutely crazy. Joseph Burrell admits era of Western dominance is over. And that you, and think about that is from Mr. Um, Europe, Europe is a garden, and everybody else is the jungle. Think about, <laughs> think about the, uh, the the difference. The the one eighty turn he had to do first. It was Europe is the garden, and we must keep all of the people out uh, because they may ruin our garden. And now he's saying that the end of the garden is right now. Um, so with that said, um, let's go back on something with that that was announced just yesterday about. The war queen, um, Victoria Newland, and um, her <laughs> and resigning, and um, Incognito brings up a point right here, and he says, "I heard Newland being investigated for missing ten billion dollars, so she resigned. Rats fleeing a, a sinking ship. Uh, you can have that question. You can have that statement right there." So I actually saw a tweet from Nicholas Burns, the U.S. ambassador to China, and he literally tweeted out. Victoria Newland, she's the heart and soul of the U.S. Foreign Service. <laughs> I was just laughing. I mean, because he's right. He's right. Victoria Newland exact is the heart and soul of, mm -hmm. of U.S. foreign policy. It's more like the heart of darkness. She just epitomized everything that's wrong with the U.S. empire. I mean, I'm just guessing here. There's multiple reasons. Somebody had to take the fall for the failed Ukrainian policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, you, you, <laughs> Victoria Newland is the obvious target because he is in the forefront of pushing this war in Ukraine. Since 24, since the Euromaidan, she was the one that's handing out cookies. Everybody's mm -hmm. remember the cookie monster handing out the cookies <laughs> on, on, on Maidan square right now um the the dnc the different uh, democratic establishment they're they're scrambling trying to uh save biden's election campaign and and i think newland just happened to be the fall girl you know for you know someone someone have to take take uh someone have to have to face the axe for the u.s foreign policy might as well be newland uh, this is my guess Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Lex Burren says he's talking about the maiden coup. He says, Maiden coups, that's right. He says, Um, Crimea voted in a referendum to be returned to Russia, that's right. Dumbass and other regions asked Putin for help because they were being genocided in the Dumbass. They burned people in Odessa. Let us not forget that. Let us not forget that they trapped people in buildings and they set the buildings on fire with those people alive inside and the west western press overlooked that and, and he says also and now they are genociding gaza as well do you think that there will be an explosion of violence um because we see israel becoming more and more desperate also because let's look at this from um from an outside view um their economy is held together with the spitting glue because it, it takes the United States and, and the European Union to inject uh, liquidity in, into the um, Israeli economy. Um, they can only sustain themselves militarily through U.S. shipments of, of weapons. But the United States 
economy is in, in tatters. The European Union economy is in tatters. The European Union has no weapons to spare. The United States has no weapons to spare. And all while that is going on, Netanyahu continues to provoke Hezbollah. I think that's his game. I think his game is trying to drag U.S. directly into a war, a wider Middle Eastern war in, uh, in, in Lebanon and the Middle East. And so, so this is his way of ensuring continued U.S. support for Israel. It's by, by dragging U.S. directly into the conflict. I mean, I, 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 no, I don't think even Israeli military is stupid and insane enough wanting to launch another ground invasion of Lebanon by themselves, you know, because we know they will get their ass kicked just like <laughs> back in, back in 2000s. Uh, and, and especially at this juncture when they had their hands full committing atrocity in, in, in Gaza. So I, I think their, their real aim is to force U.S. hands and to get U.S. involved into Middle East, which is what U.S. does not want to do, because what the U.S. established and really want to do is they want to pivot to Asia to confront China. This is why you have people like, I mean, there's a, there's already a section of the U.S. Uh, elite, you know, represented by people like Tucker Carlson, who wants to make nice with Russia, so U.S. can concentrate on China. I mean, Tucker Carlson pretty much said, said so himself on a, on a in, recent uh, interview. And he said, you know, I don't see why we should be having a beef with Russia because in his words, Russia mm -hmm. is Christian and Western because Russia's culture is still based in Western civilization. And whereas China is so different from us. The rise of China is scary. I mean, we're on to, you know, contemplating an invasion of Russia during winter, because <laughs> that works. Anyway, there's this very interesting. I would, ask, I would ask the question like, the, the, clearly the, the threats to the United States and the US, our interests, global trade routes, energy, pure like military power, relative, uh, relative military power comes from China, of course. And so to the extent that you are focused on another region, given the size of our military, our attention span, the limits of our budget, you are detracting from that. And so the question is, is it worth it? And being American, we're not trained to think that way. We imagine everything is a possibility. The world's a menu of endless possibilities. We can do all of it. But the truth is we can't never have been able to. There are limits of you know, physics and money and, and reality that impose on you. And so uh, of course, I wish Latvia the best. I would feel sad if Latvia ever lost its autonomy, to the extent it actually has autonomy as a NATO member, but whatever. I would say to myself, you know, that's sad. Is it, but is intervening, given the realistic possibilities of doing what we want to do, worth it, given that that would detract from the real problems, which are East, not Eastern Europe, but Far East. So uh, that's how I would think about it. I think that's a pretty moderate, sensible, realistic way to think about anything. I don't think that's radical. I certainly don't think it's taking Putin's side. I have no, I have no special interest in any of this. I only care about my country. Well, it's interesting you mentioned China because I, I mean, there's been a lot of talk in foreign policy circles about the Pacific pivot over the last 20 years in America and how mm -hmm. America's strategic focus now has to move to the Pacific rather than to Europe the Middle East uh, and Eastern Europe. Uh, and of course, the Pacific pivot does actually challenge China. I mean, it does challenge China's ambition. So it does presumably suit China for America to be focused on uh, the Ukraine uh, because it means they care a little bit less about what China's doing in, say, the South China Sea or something like that. Needless to say. So, and you could you know, look, I'm not alleging any conspiracy here. I do think there is a feature of human nature that causes, and I think it's innate, that causes people when confronted with an unsolvable problem to turn to something else to occupy their minds. And anyone who's been, I mean, this is relevant to your viewers who are journalists, anyone who's ever been on deadline for, say, a magazine piece will find himself sorely tempted to rearrange his books by author because it's, it's another problem to work on as you ignore the problem that confronts you that you actually can't solve. China is a problem that is very hard for the United States to solve. And it's not clear how we do solve that problem. And by problem, I mean 
you know, sort of giving hegemony over the world to a country that doesn't believe anything really that we believe. It would be a massive change in the way the world operates, in the way that we in the United States live, in the way that you and Great Britain live. I mean, having China in charge of the world would be very different from what we have now. That's a huge concern, a, a legitimate concern, I think. Um, and we're not meaningfully dealing with it. And I think, you know, part of, you often hear people on the right say, well, that's because they're all taking money from China. Well, yes, that's true. Our former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, who's like a moron, by the way, but got rich, as so many have been. But, you know, got rich effectively making China's case to the American business community. Many others in our diplomatic corps have done the same. So that's a, that's a straight up sellout. Hollywood sells out. The NBA sells out. They're controlled by the Chinese government. Everyone knows that. But I think the deeper problem has nothing to do with commerce. It just has to do with the terrifying nature of this threat and our own fear that we can't actually do anything about it. So here's where I would start. Not that I make these decisions. But it's not a question of pivoting east. China has massive influence within our hemisphere. Go to any island in the Caribbean, including the American colonies there. We call them protectorates or some of their colonies. St. Croix, Virgin Islands, for example. All the infrastructure in St. Croix is built by China. What? Why would China be building the airport and the roads in St. Croix? And why are they doing the same in Jamaica and Haiti and virtually every population center in the Caribbean? Also true in South America. Again, this is our hemisphere, which for more than 200 years, we've said explicitly, we control, we will not allow, you know, world powers from across the oceans to control, you know, anything of meaning in our hemisphere. And yet they are. And this is being completely ignored. I never heard anybody mention it. I just noticed it from traveling a lot. So I would just start there and say, you know, what is this about? Maybe it's totally benign that they're building the infrastructure in Bolivia. Maybe it's not. Well, also, I mean, if, if you were designing American global strategy, you would think, if you were George Kennan or something, you would think isolating China would be good, therefore splitting Russia off from China would be what good. Mean, what is that? Except for the fact that America's rhetoric at the moment seems to be driving Russia to, and China together as, as quickly as possible. What's, and that is, of course, the effect. I, I personally believe it's one of the intended effects but what's so fascinating to me and so repugnant is that clearly there are many people in positions of power in the United States who sincerely believe that we have more in common with China and its government than the government of Russia. Now, this is in no way a defense of the way the Putin government operates. You'll notice I don't live there. I don't care to. I feel sorry for Ed Snowden who's stuck there, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're being honest, and we always should be, we have far more in common with Russia than we have with China. I mean, Russia is a Christian country. No, it's not any kind of evangelical country or morally upright country. I'm not right. But its culture is rooted in Western civilization, which is another way of saying, and we never say it, but it's true, Christian civilization and Christianity. I mean, its presuppositions are Christian, whether it lives up to them, often it doesn't. The darkest period in Russian history was the period when it ceased to be Russian and became Soviet. And, you know, anyway, you see the point. So for our leaders who are very familiar with how both of those countries work to look at the world and say, you know, we're on China's side, which is absolutely what they're saying, reveals something horrifying about them. Again, that's a, you could say, you know, I, I hate Putin. I hate the way he runs that government. But really, compared to what? I mean, that's the other thing. Compared to what? This is a nasty world filled with you know, genocidal lunatics at the helm, not simply of two or three countries, but of a lot of countries. And the only reason they're not committing genocide is because they don't have the power to. But there are a lot of bad people in charge, always have been. So to decide that Putin is the worst of the lot, like you're lying, actually, or you're totally ignorant. Well, your, your bringing up of Christianity and Western culture brings up uh, another accusation that is often made against you, which is that you are uh, rousing the forces of ethno-nationalism. Uh, how do you respond when people say that to you? <laughs> He's basically voiced what we have been said all along on your show, that U.S. is scared of a non-Western, non-white nation rising to the top. And, and so there's uh, as the, the, you, part of the U.S. elite represented by Tucker, represented by uh, John Mearsheimer, had long advocated to make peace with Russia to concentrate on China. 
Uh, but that's not going to work. You know, we saw that in the first Trump administration. You know, Trump tried to do that, but all the, um, the, the Democrats and, and, and the NATO bureaucracy wouldn't let him. Because, you know, that, that would invalidate NATO. So, so, so they, ha they had to drag him into having a confrontational stand with Russia. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that eventually led to 2022. So right now, I think, uh, you know, the, 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 the garden is failing. The jungle is taking over because the gardeners are stupid. I mean, that's, 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 that's the situation right now. We, we are ruled by a bunch of stupid and incompetent elite who don't know what they're doing. You know, they, they have high aspirations. They want to aspire to continually remain on the top, to dominate the world, but they're too incompetent and too stupid to do it.